showing you some of the use cases that uh, we can provide just with our two products. And this is not even really including some of the stuff that uh, we've just seen from, from the integrations. So typically, most people use our platforms for external clients, for, for engaging with clients, for sharing information securely with clients. And that's you know, where most of our, 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 our clients start off their journey with, that, with our hyphen products. You know, extranet, secure file sharing, and so on. But then it starts you know, uh, becoming a bit more sophisticated, maybe running communities of practice, whether they're particular sector groups or industry groups, or then demonstrating you can actually uh, improve that transparency and putting up some financial data or other reporting and insight, perhaps using it then to become uh, more transaction efficient and using it for legal project management and so on. And then you kind of get into the more sophisticated use cases around due diligence reviews or uh, some of the more specific solutions that we can provide around you know, managing portfolios of properties or contract management and other things that we can do. And then often people realize that this is a great tool. We're, we're working, uh, we're, we're efficient, we're helping uh, our lawyers engage with their clients and work securely. Actually, why don't we use these same tools internally? Why don't we use it to run our internal projects? Uh, we've even got firms using it for their entire intranet. And so then you start looking at the internal matter collaboration, setting up uh, different workspaces to, to run all your different matters, templating them, automating the creation of the workspace when you open a new matter, these kinds of things. Uh, and of course, we have a wide array of different um, functionality in our product, so it really enables you to run enterprise social networks and intranets, as well as um, you know, project management and other things. Um, and then, more recently, we've kind of moved into personal productivity and with publisher and client engagement things. So last year we released um, you know, Hyphen Drive, which gives you your corporate Dropbox functionality for your file sync and, file sync and share, do large file transfers and personal task management. And then Publisher gives you that um, layer above your transactional work product where you can engage with your clients and demonstrate your thought leadership, uh, your content marketing, your content awareness and other things. So that's really a, a very broad set of solutions. And I, I, I'd like to show this slide because you know, we, we hate it when people think we're just a file sharing platform. We're much more than that. Um, so we try and emphasize that every time, and hopefully you've seen some of that as well from the other speakers. So um, I'm actually going to show you some of these use cases as well in a moment. Uh, before I get on to collaborate, I just want to mention one other thing. Um, and, and you know, you've seen actually a demonstration effectively then with the Raven demo of our API, because in the, in the background, Raven are grabbing those files via our API, analyzing them on their side, and pushing that data back up to our API. And that's been a big thing for us um, to, to write that API, enable other people to integrate with us, but also for us to write integrations with other systems ourselves. And so we've got very various connectors that we can hook into to push data back and forth between our systems and other people's systems. And that's really important because when you're talking about a firm-wide system that's going to be used for collaborating across the organization or with your clients and so on, you're going to need to hook into iManage to grab your documents. You're going to need to hook into Active Directory to synchronize your users. You might have data or document libraries in SharePoint or you might have financial data in SQL Server and so on. So all of, this, the, all of these integrations are, we see, the really crucial uh, aspect of, of us becoming, you know, uh, aiming to uh, really deliver those, those very deep solutions for you. So just to, just to highlight that the HiQ appliance is there, that's how we do that. It's actually um, something that we've installed inside the network and then it has connectors into all these different systems that we can transfer data back and forth between um, whether it's Active Directory SharePoint and, and our system. So the idea find something you can, you can talk to your account manager about if that's something of interest to you. So <clears throat> just, uh, I think Ryan, Ryan's uh, blurred images didn't really give you a, a fair picture of publisher, so I will, I will uh, try not to um, show you some quite so blurry pictures and really give you a good insight to what it'll do. Obviously it's not going to be Norton Rose's uh, implementation, but it will be a generic IQ example, but all the functionality is essentially the same. Uh, I think first of all, let's try and tackle the question, what is Publisher? Um, I think the best way to think of it is a, uh, either a digital experience platform or some kind of digital content hub. Um, you know, that's the best way to think of it, really. It's essentially a content management system. <clears throat> it's a way for you to actually take your you know-how, know your know legal know-how, your knowledge, your experience, your thought leadership, and promote that and you know, publish that and make it available to your clients, but also your prospects. So it's a way of really promoting the firm and delivering those, some of those added value services to your clients. And Ryan showed you one way of creating a subscription product as well. And it really deals with multiple different types of content. You can tailor that content, you can target it. The users themselves, when you give them access to it, can personalize it so they can pull from the firm what they're interested in rather than you pushing them everything that they perhaps are not quite so interested in. Uh, and you can deliver that across multiple channels. It's, it's responsive, just like Collaborate, it works across different devices and so on. 
and it can be localized as well. We can present the information in multiple different languages. And we really try to take in a lot of inspiration from you know, other kind of content delivery platforms like Flipboard and Medium and other things, which have a really fantastic uh, user experience and are very engaging to use. So PubShow for us is, is really trying to take that, that level above uh, collaborating in, in that sort of stack of information. Um, <clears throat> so to try and summarize the, the primary ways that you can apply it, I think the first one, perhaps the most traditional use case, if you like, would be what I would say is portals. So that can either be an internal portal, so we have people using it as an intranet, a very glossy, kind of uh, very engaging, very visual and modern intranet, or it can be for some kind of externally facing client portal. So LinkedIn, for example, for their client knowledge portal, and they publish lots of uh, their, their uh, most valuable know-how and other things into there. The other way, uh, and this is sort of uh, relatively new, is for public content. Actually, you can completely open it up to the, to the public. So you can run blogs on it. You can publish, uh, you know, all of your publications in the public domain, run events, uh, seminar programs, and marketing campaigns, and so on. So really for content marketing, essentially, is the way I would describe that. Uh, or it can be a mixture of the two. Some of it can be completely open, and then some of it can be gated, so that you have to log in to get access to the most valuable content. And only you'd only give that access to your, your top client accounts or your key, into, key client account management program would be focused around your top 20 clients. They would get access to a deeper level of, of, of content um, than you'd make available publicly. So it can be very much incorporated with your, your dot com. Um, we have a lot of people asking us, can it be their dot com? And I think that's something uh, that could, would be the next logical step. <clears throat> and then the third primary bucket would be exactly what Brian was talking about these online products and services. So actually taking legal knowledge and expertise and productizing it and turning it into a revenue stream and a subscription model. Uh, and Norton Rose have done that very well. Uh, Clipper Chance have done that very well. Alan Overy have done that very well. There are lots of examples of firms that are really um, digitizing their legal know-how and expertise and creating these subscription services. And there, there are many examples that are becoming more commonplace. So really taking that concept of the toolkits, uh, the microsites in particular, I think are, are great. And uh, I'll show you some examples of some of these things. So that's kind of what publisher does. Um, now let me just show it to you. Uh, I can succeed where Ryan wasn't able to. Um, so here we have just the, the, the dashboard of publisher. As you can see immediately, it's very visual, it's very engaging. Um, that's obviously deliberate because it's you know, very much dealing with a, a more business development driven or marketing driven use case about engaging with your clients or potentially your prospects. So as I said, this can be completely public and actually this page is public. If I, if I was to log out, I'd still be able to access this. And then as soon as I clicked on one of these articles, then at that point it would ask me to log in. And this is all completely customizable. So the look and feel of this would be completely customized for your brand, for your law firm's look and feel. <coughs> it's very easy to change the layout of these pages. It's all completely um, browser driven. You don't have to have any technical knowledge or experience or anything like that. So much the same way that we do with Collaborate, what we actually do is we, we give you your own instance of this product, we work with you to configure it and set it up according to whatever uh, you know, problems specifically you're trying to solve, and then we brand it for you and customize it for you. And then from then on, you can do the kinds of things that Ryan was talking about. You create microsites in a few seconds. Uh, you can basically uh, you know, do other things around uh, creating custom channels or products and target particular industry sectors or groups of clients, and you can do it all on the fly anytime you want. Um, so here's just one example. This is uh, the dashboard, and you can see we've got that sort of uh, very modern sort of what we call it masonry. But it's that sort of similar to, to Flipboard kind of layout. Then we've got other other panels and things here. Um, it has a full metadata and taxonomy system with backends. So you can actually tag all of your content when you're uploading it, making it available, and then your clients basically log in, and then they tell you what their preferences are. So that that push pull model I was talking about earlier on. So here you can see, I can set my preferences. You can see this is the metadata that's been added in this particular example. And I can tell you what I'm interested in, which practice areas, which regions, which se sectors I want to receive information for from the system. And then it will tailor that and display that on the home page when I log in, and it will drive email alerts to me as well. So you, that can then be synced back into your CRM system. So if you've got interaction or others, you can push that data back into your CRM system, and you can use that for other purposes, for, for promoting seminars, webinars, whatever it might be. So it's really uh, allowing them to personalize the experience. Uh, and just to show you how easy that is to, to customize the dashboard here, it's all, as I said, a very um, GUI-driven layout, so I can just drag and drop panels around. I've got these entire sections I can move around, um, and I can just add new panels of information as I need to. So I can just say I want to insert a content list, and it'll ask me what type of content and so on. So it's very, very easy to use. Anyone can use it. You've just got to um, have the content in the first place. That's the only hard part. Um, 
And then you can create as many of these dashboards as you want to. And I'll still show you here, you can also integrate with Collaborate. So actually what PubShow ends up being is it can be the central entry point for your clients into all of the information and services that you're providing. So you can actually say, well actually here's your mitigation master, here's your project workspace, um, and, and so on. That's actually living in our other system, that's in Collaborate. And I can access it back from here uh, if I want to, but I'm still getting that you know, ambient awareness of what's going on in my industry, in my sector, that the firm is providing all that thought leadership. So you're really creating a huge amount of stickiness for your clients, uh, and you're delivering all of that extra value. And you can, of course, incorporate other, other things like uh, Twitter feeds and other external bits of content as well. Um, and then just quickly I'll show you, so the way you can organize the content is into these uh, modules or, or channels. Um, so they can either be specific to one particular type of content, like uh, this news channel, which could be you know, either completely public as a blog or closed uh, as more of a, a publications platform. Each one has a very engaging um, look and feel, and this is all templatable. You can change it to make it look whatever you want it to look like. We can also stream video and, and podcasts and other kind of rich media as well. Um, so you can see here, just click onto this, you can upload a video, we'll then stream it back to the, to the users and, and it works across all different devices and so on and so forth. You can also relate bits of content to other bits of content, so if you want to aggregate everything around a particular topic or subject matter, you can do that uh, as well. And then just showing you some of the uh, microsites and some of the kind of more productized uh, legal services. So, you know, the kinds of things you can do, I'll just show you one example of a microsite. So essentially that enables you to um, create a mini website around any subject or topic. Um, so it could be an event, it could be a partner conference, it could be something like uh, what Ryan was talking about. And essentially they're just a collection of pages and you can put whatever content you want into them or you can embed other dynamic content such as the Neota app or um, anything else, one of our own applications which you'll see in a second as well. So they're really just flexible tools allowing you to create websites anytime you want. They're templated so you can just create them literally in a few minutes. Um, so it's very easy to use. And then the final thing I just wanted to show you here in Publisher was what we call comparison toolkits. And so these are essentially um, an out-of-the-box tool for you to uh, do things like cross-border guides or dawn raids guides and so on. So what it allows you to do is create a, a data structure in the back end. Uh, so you can just basically a series of questions and answers. Um, and then you can pivot that around any kind of element of the metadata to compare it. So in this case, we're comparing against jurisdictions. You're saying, well, actually, what are the what are the rules when you do when, it, when it's a dawn raid in, in the UK versus in Spain? How are they how are they different? What do I need to do? This is very valuable legal information. Um, a bit like Ryan was talking about, you know, you're actually taking some real legal know-how and putting it into a digital product or service, and you can charge a subscription fee for it. So here we're looking at just one of those. It's the United Kingdom. You can see, you know, what happens is if you compulsory to cooperate, well, there's the all the legal advice and so on. Um, and actually, but I want to know what the differences are because I'm thinking of opening an office somewhere else as well. So I say, okay, I want the answers to all the questions, but I want to see now how it affects or what the differences are between um, Spain and the UK. And you can just keep adding as many as you want to. And now essentially I can see my reports and I can export this to PDF and so on. So you can have, and you know, if you have Clifford Chance and, and you know, they use this product extensively to create guides for their clients, essentially. Um, and we are uh, charging uh, substantial amounts of money in some cases for some of these, uh, for access to these products. So that's just a quick look at you know, how culture actually works and the kinds of things that you can do, um, do with it. Um, okay, I'll move on to Collaborate. Um, so hopefully you're all at least fairly familiar with Collaborate and what it can do. Um, just to summarize that, for any of you that aren't as familiar, we really see Collaborate as uh, multiple products in one. Um, for us, it's, it's actually a toolkit in itself, uh, Collaborate. Um, and uh, you know, we've got powerful modules like the iSheets module, which you've seen there, uh, demonstrated with the Rave integration. But we've also obviously got the file sharing and the, the collaborative tools, the wikis and blogs, and the project management tools and tasks and so on. So really, we see it as multiple products in one. It's really solving lots of different problems. So instead of needing four or five um, different point solutions, one for sending a large file, one for intranet, one for directionnet, one for kind of online database collaboration and other things and so on, um, actually you can just aggregate all of those, all that functionality and all those use cases in one place. And so it's, it's very much, um, I guess, a combination of internal and external collaboration and very much um, teamwork as well as personal productivity. And so we do deliver things like the corporate Dropbox type functionality and large file transfers. We can also do enterprise social networks on the internet. So it really is a very broad uh, platform as you saw on that use case slide. Um, 
Last year we released uh, Collaborate version 3.4, the next version uh, obviously is what I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and with that came Haiku Drive. We've actually just uh, just making now available Haiku Drive for Mac. So those of you, I know there are a few clients here in the US that use uh, uh, Macs, and uh, Haiku Drive for Mac is now available as well. And we also released uh, various other, other updates as well, such as Office integration, and two of the big security features, um, hybrid storage and encryption key management. I'm not going to labor on those because I think hopefully you already know about those. But essentially, they allow you to store your files anywhere with hybrid, and encryption key management allows you to hold the encryption keys yourselves. Um, so that we're not holding the encryption keys uh, and they're not stored with the files. You hold, you hold the keys. And of course, with the API, uh, we can now do things like um, bi directional synchronization with, with iManage or other document management systems. So, as well as pushing, pushing files up, from your DNS into Collaborate, and then edit them in Office straight from Collaborate, and then save them back to Collaborate, and then they'll synchronize back into your DMS again. Um, so that two-way worksite sync or two-way DNSing uh, is something uh, relatively new as well. So that was uh, Collaborate 3.4. Um, what I wanted to do just quickly was give you a quick demo of some of the uh, sort of solutions and use cases that we see um, being particularly uh, interesting or useful, aside from the sorts of things you've already seen. So I thought I'd just give you a very quick um, couple of minutes, check the time, yeah, good. Um, just a quick, quick couple of minutes of some of the more interesting use cases. Um, so here is one that we did around the legal project management use case. So uh, this is basically, basically where we're using the platform to help us uh, you know, run, uh, run a process, run a project. Um, and actually, you know, we're using all the different tools here. Um, as you can see, we've renamed them to, to have different functionality and so on. And then we've created this nice custom dashboard which summarizes you know, what's going on, what are the upcoming uh, milestones, a bit of financial data, um, if there are any risks that have been flagged up, any news and so on, um, and you know, who the project team is, and a bit of a financial overview as well, a business overview. So this we've created, this is a bit of a custom homepage, we can create these, uh, give you a bit of assistance to do that, um, uh, or you, if you have the skills in-house, you can do that yourselves as well. Uh, just gives you one, one example. Um, then I wanted to just show you some of the more interesting uh, use cases for iSheets and some examples of the sorts of things that we uh, talked about on that other slide. Um, so here, what we're doing is we're using the API uh, to pull in financial data from, uh, you know, from internally within the, within the firm and present that in the iSheets module. So here, actually, what we can see is we've got all sorts of billing and WIP, WIP data, and that goes back to that point about transparency and actually giving them insight into what's going on. Um, well, actually, here you can see exactly who's recording time against this matter, what they're doing, and so on. You can drill down to see the disbursements and so on. Now, you may not want to quite have that much detail that you make available to your clients. I'm sure that would be slightly controversial, but you get the point. Um, you can pull through any data. This isn't a predefined template. It's completely customizable. Uh, and that doesn't have to be financial data. Our SQL connector actually can pull through any data at all. So it could be anything that you want to present in a structured um, kind of database or, or spreadsheet-like way. Um, you'll be able to do that using the uh, SQL connector. So a few other things uh, then for, for iSheets, um, some of which you may have seen before but the real estate portfolio solution. So here, and you can imagine this working really well with what we just saw uh, Jan demonstrating with, on Raven. But here, essentially, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a database of all the properties in a, in a shopping center or a shopping mall. Um, this can be made, made available to clients. So a lot of these solutions are actually there for you to deliver these to clients, to enable you know, your corporate law department uh, and your client that perhaps doesn't have access to such sophisticated technology, doesn't have the ability to uh, run uh, effectively a contract management database. Uh, so you can actually offer that service to your clients and give them all of these solutions here in one place. So uh, we here, you know, we have all the lease information, all the documentation. Again, just going back to, to the Raven point, that could potentially be extracted automatically if you had Raven hooked up in the back end, and it allows you to create these custom views of all the different types of um, data and information. Uh, and then the uh, other thing I wanted to show you was how you can take data from an iSheet and then export that for um, actually uh, merge it, if you like, into a Word document based on a predefined template. So essentially uh, a form of document automation or document assembly. And this can be really useful at the end of a due diligence project, for example, you capture all that data and now you want to produce a report. Um, usually that's a very time consuming process of aggregating lots of people's reports from all over the place. But actually if they're all capturing that information with you automating it using Raven, capturing all into I sheets you can then export it. Or you can use it for things like automating contracts. And again, making these available to your clients. So you could uh, use your expertise to 
um, generate a standard form employment contract or some kind of NDA or a software license agreement and so on. And because it's all embedded within this system, you can offer this as well as all the other information uh, you're providing to your clients, you can offer this as a service. So they can just come in here, they can fill out a simple form. Um, these are all the, effectively the, all the dynamic elements of the document. Um, they might have some um, conditionality or some cleverness, depending on if it's a, a UK or a US uh, contract in this case. You fill out this form and then you can actually just automate that and say, I want to generate that contract. That now takes that data, as you just saw then, it's just generated a Word document for me. Um, I'll just open that up. So essentially that's now taken whatever data was entered by the user, um, or the lawyer, whoever it might be, the client, and then you'll add that and, and, and merge it into a predefined Word template. And then you've got your standard um, contract. And all, the, all the yellow bits are the bits that have been automatically imported and, and embedded into the document. Um, so that's just one example of the contract or document automation. And then the final example I wanted to just show you was around um, contract management. So again, um, you can imagine what, uh, what Jan was showing you. Um, in this case, what we've done is we've taken a similar kind of concept and we've got basically a load of documents that we want to um, be able to display extra information about. So here we've taken an eye sheet and uh, we've applied it to the files module as custom metadata. So we've got custom metadata here. Um, in this case, this is being added manually. So when you just go to add a single file, you then profile that document um, with all the additional metadata. That's what you have to do if you don't have a robot doing it for you, uh, unfortunately. Um, so uh, everyone should have a robot. So uh, that essentially uh, uh, you know, allows you to then start offering contract management solutions to your clients. So you can do things like set alerts when the contract expires, it will alert someone to go and review that or renew it, uh, do whatever you need to do. So that's just a few examples of some of the solutions that you can drive using our technology, using iSheets and combining all the different modules, the tasks module, the events module, the files module, the wiki, the blog, and the iSheets module together to drive some of these very high value uh, use cases uh, for your clients. You have access to all this technology now. Um, all you need is Ryan to come in and help you sort it out when you're the yeah. technology innovation <coughs> architect, business transformation type person. Um, so we can help you do that. So <clears throat> we started off uh, about three years ago. We launched version three uh, back in 2013. And what we wanted to do with version three of Collaborate was, first of all, we made it mobile responsive. We wanted it to be delivered across all sorts of different devices, so we did that. We wanted to take what we saw happening or some of the key tools that we saw in the consumer world, things like uh, corporate Dropbox, um, you know, large file transfer, project management, and so on. We wanted to take all of those basic use cases that people were kind of struggling to, to do in the enterprise and they didn't really have the tools to do it, and they were being almost forced, if you like, uh, to use consumer tools to do that. We wanted to take some of those key things and incorporate them into the system. And so we did that. So what we think we've ended up with is a, a great platform. It's got that fantastic usability. We get a lot of feedback saying it uh, has a great user experience. It's very easy to use compared to lots of other systems. And we've really blended the, the file sharing or the document management with the social collaboration. And then we brought in personal productivity alongside the group work and the team work uh, and blurring the lines between intranet and extranet. And those were the things that we wanted to do uh, with Collaborate version 3. So what's next? Um, so um, cunningly named Collaborate version 4. Um, we spent a lot of time in our marketing meetings brainstorming that one. Um, and it's really focusing on three different areas. Um, really, again, taking user experience to the next level. And I think one of the things that uh, you probably see yourselves just on a day-to-day -day basis using your personal smartphones and your iPads and all these other devices is technology moves very quickly. Three years of technology is a long time. So what was uh, fantastic three years ago when we last redesigned it, it's starting to look a little bit old. So we're doing that again and we're going to really significantly improve it again. And that's more than it sounds. It's not just making it look pretty. It's actually improving it in every aspect, in every way. We've actually gone through the entire system almost and redesigned the entire thing, made hundreds, <coughs> literally hundreds of improvements across the entire system in every single module. But also we recognize that a key part of that is performance. How quickly do things load? How quickly can you access information and so on? And all of these things drive adoption. Um, and then the third thing is around uh, integration, making it work better alongside other systems. And one of the key things was making it work better alongside Publisher. So the Publisher and Collaborate can coexist in one kind of integrated way and you can move between them seamlessly and they look and feel the same and it doesn't feel jarring to move between them. 
So those were kind of the high, very high level objectives that we set out uh, last year when we, when we kicked off the Collaborate 4 project. So it really is uh, hundreds of, uh, of new features and improvements across the board, and I definitely did not show them all to you today, but I will give you a quick preview. But it's really about um, unifying the design <coughs> and unifying the, the experience so that it is consistent with culture. Um, <coughs> so things like uh, having a global top-level navigation across both systems, so you don't lose your context. You can navigate not just between our systems, but other systems. Um, a much more efficient use of, of space in the application. So actually, if you're using a, an iPad with a relatively small screen, you can actually see a lot more information and access a lot more information more easily. Really making it very responsive and, and highly, highly um, improved on the performance side as well. And then adding even more modern HTML5 features like multiple files, drag and drop, and all these kinds of things. But also, just like we did with PopShow, making it multilingual. So there will be a multilingual interface, so you'll be able to uh, you know, change, change it to be French or German, whatever you want to do. So those are the kind of things that we've been doing. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just going to give you a quick, uh, quick demo to, to end the session. Um, so again, this is just a kind of an out-of-the-box um, HiQ branded version, of course, you know, by the same uh, you know, tokens you can do now with uh, version 3 with PopShake, you can be completely customized and tailored. So uh, what we've done is we've, we've really rethought everything and uh, hopefully simplified and improved many, many things across the system. So let's just take the activity stream, for example. So now you can very clearly see here that I can apply filters. And I can apply filters on all sorts of different sites and content types and people. And some of that functionality we have now, um, some of it's improved. What I can also do now is um, save those as my defaults. So I might just say, actually, I just want to see updates from sites I'm a member of and uh, you know, what, ones which I've marked as a favorite. Then I can actually say, save those as my default. Now, every time I go to the dashboard, that default set of filters will be applied. So you know, I've essentially personalized um, what I see on the dashboard of the application now. So you can see now I've refreshed it and basically got favorite sites there as a, as, a, as a link. And so that's just one of the small improvements we made to the activity stream. We've also split out the filters so it's very easy and clear now to see all the different types of content. So this is just aggregating everything, but I can quickly just have a look here and I can see actually these are the what we call posts, the microblog posts. This is a great way of you very quickly and frictionlessly sharing information. You see actually what I did here is I just shared three attachments. So um, I attached the, the first slide of my deck and I attached Ryan's and, and my decks here as well. But now clicking on, on that file opens up a full screen view of that file, as you can see there. And you can see it's saying this is two or three attachments. So I can just cycle around these and it will actually render each one of these attachments um, using a brand new version of the, of the viewer. Um, I'll do that. To go on in the demo, so you can see there's uh, you know there's my presentation for example, all being presented in this nice full screen modal. Now when I close that, I'm exactly where I was. I haven't lost any of my context. I don't get redirected into a different workspace somewhere where that file might exist. And that applies now across the system for every single file that you see, wherever you see it, whether it's an attachment in this case or whether it's actually a file residing in the files module, that will always open up now in one of the full screen uh, modal windows. One of the other things, a little bit along the same lines that we've done, is improved uh, just how you access people's information. So clicking on anyone's name now will give you a quick drop down. It will show you uh, a quick preview um, of that person's contact details and so on. From there, you can directly send them a message, um, or, or, you know, at which point you can link and, and attach other information as well. Um, and of course, what you can see here is, as I'm scrolling down, people are sharing information and it's automatically creating previews. So all Sebastian did in this case is he just embedded a link this video and it's automatically created a preview of that video directly in the activity stream. So it's really giving you a lot of dynamic information that even works for dynamic content like Google Maps. So you can see here we have Google Maps embedded directly in the activity stream just simply by linking to it like that. Um, so it's really uh, big improvements there in the activity stream. Um, over in terms of the, uh, the, the personal productivity side, you can see here any files that I've received. So if someone shared a large file with me, I can see that here. And again, just like all the other things, clicking on these um, actually previews that, opens up the preview, um, and so I can actually just quickly see what that is and so on. Um, and then we've also got the shared items as well. So anything that I've sent to other people is there in my shared items, and I can just quickly send a new file here as well. Then we've got the tasks, the personal task management. So essentially, uh, we've split that out now into personal tasks and tasks that other people have assigned to me in other projects. So these are all my personal tasks, and I can quickly add a new one, I can give that a, a date and so on. Uh, these will go into here. No one else can see those, that's just to enable me to be personally productive. But I can also see all the tasks that have been assigned to me in other projects, and you can see here that some of these are high priority and so on. 
Um, and same thing with events. So again, we've split these out. We've now got events today or events coming up this week and in the future uh, and so on. So lots of improvements here uh, across the dashboard. Um, what you'll also notice is at the top of the screen here, we've introduced this global navigation. And so just going back to Publisher a second, that has a global navigation. It doesn't matter where you go in Publisher, this global navigation is always there. In the old version of Cloud Rate, there is no such thing. Uh, and so one, when we start navigating around, there is no global context. But with Cloud Rate version 4, we've introduced this, this concept of global navigation. Um, and essentially what you can do then is, if you actually imagine skinning Publisher and Cloud Rate to be exactly the same, they look exactly the same, they have the same global navigation linking into, not, not just within their own systems, but linking out to a .com, linking out to other products and services that you might be offering, and then you get this consistent experience. You can move the team, the functionality, deliver a, a holistic set of solutions to your clients. Um, it's very easy to configure this and change this, um, and uh, you, know, you can see here, I've, in, I've embedded a dynamic list of sites based on a particular category. So when you can categorize your sites, you say, okay, the business services sites, which you can see there, are the same as the sites in there. So if you tag a new site with business services, it will appear automatically in that list, and you'll only see the ones that you've been given access to, and so on. So improvements really are across the board in all of these, um, in all of these different things. Um, another thing you'll notice, and I mentioned uh, earlier on, better use of vertical space. So as I scroll up, that navigation bar disappears. And that's just to try and maximize, uh, give you as much visibility as possible of the content on the page. We'll do that now across the system, including in places like iSheets and the files module. So if you're looking on an iPad and you've got a big iSheet, actually it will scroll up and you'll be able to see the, the maximum number of records possible. Uh, and the same for the files. So let me just go into um, one of the sites and I'll show you just quickly a little bit more. Um, so a lot of time and effort has gone into improving the files module. And the reason behind that is hopefully self-evident that it's it's the most used module in the application, so people use the file module a lot. Um, there's a lot of things you can do now that were not possible previously. So we've got full support for drag and drop, so I can take that and I can drop it into one of the other folders. I can drag and drop files straight off my desktop, drop them into here, and they'll start uploading. Uh, but when they're uploading, you can continue to navigate around because you've got an upload manager appearing here. So it doesn't kind of prevent you from uh, continuing to work whilst you're uploading a large file, for example. Um, we've also introduced um, other views and other uh, ways of looking at the information. So we've got this uh, standard column view, which you can see here. Uh, I can just kind of go like that. But I can also put it into thumbnail view. And that will actually render a preview of all the files. Not just images, not just JPEGs and, and so on, but actually documents as well. So if you've got a PDF, or if you've got a, um, a Word document, or if you've got an Excel file even, it will render a view of all of those. And I can probably find some if I go um, back up to here. We'll see hopefully there's other types of information so there's there's a word document there are other things and just like you saw on the uh, on the home page on the dashboard if i click on one of these documents it opens up a preview of that word document now i've got all the metadata on the right hand side so if that file does have any of the custom metadata if it's been extracted by raven or can added in manually that would now be displayed on the right hand side you can then see all the comments around it if there are any tasks associated with that document you can see that all in one place and I can just open up one of them and I can just keep clicking through and I can see the next car, the, the next file, the next file and so on. So actually for a kind of a, a review process, um, it's really now very powerful because you can open up one document and just keep cycling through within that folder, reviewing each document and so on. Um, and you can see all of its context, all of its information and everything around that document there as well. So lots and lots of improvements here uh, in the files module. There is one other thing as well, which is the, the, what's called the full screen mode. So when you do that, it kind of just tries to maximize if you do have a bigger monitor which unfortunately can't really show you here, but if you have a bigger monitor, which I can show you that if I zoom out, that kind of simulates what it would look like on a big monitor. So outside of full screen mode, it would be like that, and when you put it into full screen mode, it just blows the whole thing up and maximizes whatever um, space you've got. And again, if you're looking at a large set of documents or files or a large set of iSheet records, you can see all of that um, in one easy go. And then, we'll see you back in again. Um, you'll notice that we have much more powerful uh, filtering. So I can actually say I'm only interested to see PDFs, um, or I only want to see documents that have been tagged with a particular keyword and so on. So anything that's been tagged with a contract, um, and now you know, there's nothing there. So um, it, it's you know a lot of, of effort has gone into really enabling you to use the same basic tools, but they're much more powerful and much more easy to use. Um, they they you know they give you new possibilities with things like the viewer and so on. So there are lots of improvements here in, in the files module. Um, if I go into the wiki quickly, I can show you 
here we've done kind of inline editing, so I can just really get rid of that and save that straight away. That's now edited. We've got inline editors here as well, so you can see I don't have to shift into a different context with it on wiki page. It's all directly here um, within the page and so on. And a bit like in the files module, I can just drag and drop attachments. I can just drag and drop things onto the wiki page to attach them. If they're images, they'll render as a thumbnail. If they're normal kind of files, they'll render as a, a you know an ordinary kind of attachment. And then you can see here, even in the comments, you can do similar things as well. So lots of changes there as well. Um, in the blog, we've improved again the, the uh, you know the look and feel of the blog. We've now got the ability to, to hide the left-hand column in all of the modules, actually, including in the wiki and so on. You can see here. Clicking into this, um, you know, we're taking some inspiration here from Publisher to make it a lot more engaging, uh, a lot richer, and so on. Uh, and then the final thing I just wanted to show you was um, just going into the iSheets module and showing you just quickly some of the improvements there. So one of the things, or a lot of the common feedback or, uh, that we've had around iSheets is around the use of space. So now, just like in the, the files module, you've got the full screen mode. Uh, and if there were more records in here, that would all scroll up and you'd have really maximizing the amount of uh, records you could see at any one time. Um, we've also incorporated much of the adding and editing um, scenarios into modal windows. So it makes it very, very easy now to interact and edit and add items into the iSheet. So you don't lose your context again. So when you click add item, it's not refreshing the view, taking you away from the iSheet you were looking at, um, whilst you add a new record and then you save it, taking you back and you lose your position. None of that happens anymore. Now it all happens in modal windows and you've got nice touches like you can just tick add another item and then as I'm filling this out, the modal window will stay open. I can just keep add, 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 and keep adding more and more records. And you can do the same thing with editing as well. So you can keep editing the records and this modal window will stay open. We've incorporated things like the descriptions. So if you need uh, help or guidance or filling out the form, you can incorporate those into the, uh, into the right hand side into the description field there as well. So there's lots of other improvements in iSheet, so I, I'm not going to go through and show you um, everything, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek, really, at some of the uh, some of the features that we've got across the system. So that is a quick look at uh, Collaborate 4 and some of the things that we're doing. Um, just time for me to, to wrap up, I think, now. So Collaborate 4 is a, is a really big release. It's got hundreds of improvements across the board in every single module, making it a lot easier to use, a lot faster to use. Um, and really taking that integration with publishers to the next level to provide <coughs> integrated solutions and services to all your clients. But what do we want to do beyond that? You know, when we delivered 4.0, where, where are we going with 4X? What's the kind of overall vision? And I think um, you know, one thing we're very focused on is, is around improving the firm's ability to uh, you know, uh, deliver innovative solutions which are agile, which are responsive, which uh, drive efficiency and process optimization internally. So really having uh, the ability for you to create and re-centralize all of your collaboration around this tool, create all of your Matter workspaces in here with customizable dashboards, enable you to drop um, data visualization in there so you've got all that data coming in from Raven or you've manually entered it or as part of a, a review process, but now you to visualize it. You want charts and graphs, um, so you want to productize that. We can do it at the moment, but it's a, a manual kind of implementation. That will all be much like you saw in Publisher when I edited that dashboard and these easy drag and drop panels around. We'll do a very, very similar thing to that in Collaborate. Uh, and then one of the things that we've been often asked about is workflow. And I think you know we do have some limited kind of workflow at the moment in iSheets and other modules that allows you to create processes. We really want to take that to the next level and deliver a, a very powerful workflow engine that can really drive that kind of efficiency uh, and optimize your processes internally. And of course, deeper integration with other apps. And we've seen some of that today. Um, and that's you know a continuing theme for us, not just our own applications, but really building up an ecosystem of the best <coughs> legal tech solutions out there to enable you to deliver those um, cutting edge solutions to your clients. Uh, and then one of the other things we'll do finally is to build a, a native mobile application. So at the moment everything's responsive, it's all in a web application, um, which is great and it works really well, but there are certain things you can't do, like push notifications or integration with the base operating system and so on. So we will do that, we'll build native applications as well. So there's loads and loads of good stuff to come, even after we've delivered 4.0, and I'm sure the roadmap is essentially infinite and never ending. Um, and I know that probably better than anyone. Um, so just to summarize then, what our vision is, and to try and, I guess, encapsulate some of what's been said today across all of the different speakers. One thing we firmly believe in is, is the concept of a smart law firm. Um, and that is really what, where we think every firm needs to get to over the next few years. Actually, it really isn't long at all. 
Firms have to be agile, they've got to be efficient, they've got to be responsive, and they've got to be optimised. They have to be able to respond to the demands of their clients, to the changing industry, um, and they really have to leverage some of this technology to become technologically advanced and take that and apply it in innovative ways to um, you know, some um, perhaps quite traditional problems and others which we don't yet know about. Um, you need that toolkit. Uh, I feel very strongly as well that there's too much separation between you know, what's typically considered internal collaboration and external collaboration. And actually, collaboration is collaboration. It doesn't really matter who it's with. You need to work and you need a unified space to do that in. You don't want to have to context switch into two different systems all the time. So really trying to unify what, you know, internal and external collaboration. Give people uh, holistic matter workspaces that they can operate in just internally and then when they need to, they can pull external users in or clients in and then uh, you know, give them access to whatever they need. And of course, building that loyalty, building that engagement with your clients, making them come back, but not just your clients, it's actually your employees as well, your lawyers. Because uh, you know, uh, perhaps a more traditional firm will start looking uh, perhaps less attractive than a modern, more innovative firm. So really building that same kind of level of engagement with your internal staff as your external, giving them modern tools to work with, to be productive, uh, and not actually burdening them in some ways with, with old technology. So we really want to provide a, a complete solution stack wherever possible, um, and you know, integrating with the ecosystem of other vendors and other excellent technology that's out there. Um, so you know, our vision is really to, to take our clients on a journey, uh, starting off with PubShow and your most public content in your .com, um, taking that in your blogs and so on, into client portals where it's then restricted and perhaps gated, into then collaborate where it's secure, it's, it's still external, but it's secure, it's where you collaborate with your uh, people outside of your buyer, not just clients, but partners, suppliers, you know, increasingly uh, we see uh, kind of um, lots of organizations coming together like Leximundi where there's lots of different firms all over the world that have to work together need a centralized tool and a place to be able to, be able to do that. And then down deeper into internal collaboration into your internet and so on. And we see you know, PubShare at the top of that stack and collaborate at the bottom. So PubShare is your more public, uh, marketing driven, business development driven, portal type information. And collaborate is the workplace, the place where you're doing all your secure transactional information. And that's really where we want to get to with both of our products and what's driving our roadmap. So thank you very much. I think we're just about on time, which is rare for us. Um, and uh, any questions about anything you've seen today, I'm sure we can open up the floor to, to Ryan, to Jan, and anyone else that you have questions for. Silence. Uh, yes. Uh, so with the blog on uh, Collaborate Core, yeah. are you going to be able to publish that externally if you want to? Um, so at the moment, no. I mean, at the moment, it's it's meant to be kind of more like a project blog, if you like, or a blog for that pure audience. But I think it makes sense eventually that you could, um, perhaps even in the wiki, be drafting your blog and then say, actually, this is ready for public consumption now. I'm going to push that out to the public. So we haven't done that yet in core, but I think that's an obvious next step. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Derek, uh, Slack has taken the corporate world by. Storm, or at least you sort of say yeah. that. Um, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about a Slack view of the world. Yeah, I think, I mean, high tier. yeah, it's, it's a good question. I, I think Slack is great. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think it's it's one thing to have uh, adoption amongst development teams and, you know, perhaps slightly more technical users than, uh, than lawyers and, you know, other users, which we know through hard experiences, quite hard to get them to, to adopt such tools. But I'm a firm believer in that kind of uh, collaboration and the, and the frictionless and very easy way you can communicate with people. So I personally would like to see more of that kind of functionality coming to collaborate as well. And I think you know, if enough of you uh, show an interest in that kind of technology, then that's exactly the kind of thing that we'll, we'll start building in. To a certain extent, we have that with the active stream and the microblogging. Um, it's, I guess it's slightly less real time than Slack. Um, Slack is more like instant messaging, essentially, I guess, uh, with, with some other stuff in there as well. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, I'd love to see that broadly. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything about Raven or about what Ryan was talking about? That's a wrap then. Thank you very much.